This is part four in our series of lectures on the part of section 5.1 dealing with equivalent sets. In this lecture we're going to talk about equivalence of sets as an equivalence relation. Suppose we start with some collection of sets. So recall that the fundamental definition in this chapter is that we say that A is equivalent to B provided there exists a bijection from A to B. And so that means that this symbol defines a relation on the given collection of sets. So what we wish to do in this lecture is show that that is, in fact, an equivalence relation. So what tools do we have that we can make use of in order to show that it's an equivalence relation? Well, I collect the tools that we're going to use in this theorem, and these are all results that we've seen in the chapter on functions. So the first one says that if A is any set, and we let I sub A represent the identity function from A to A, it's the function that maps each element to itself, then that is in fact a bijection. The second one says that if you have two sets, and you have a function from A to B, which is a bijection, then F inverse, which always exists as a as a um, relation, but is not normally, in fact, a function. Um, in this case, it is a function, and it's also a bijection. So one can only say that if the original function f is a bijection. And thirdly, um, the third part of the theorem tells us that when you take the composition of two bijections, you get another bijection. So these are all results that we considered in some detail in the chapter on functions. And these are what we're going to use in order to prove the main result of this section. So here's the theorem we want to prove. We want to prove that this relation is an equivalence relation on the particular collection of sets that we're interested in. And so why don't you put your video on pause for the moment and see if you can write the proof. It's really just a very simple application of the previous theorem. Begin by trying to prove that this relation is reflexive. Well, here's my proof that it's reflexive. You give yourself any set from the collection and you have to prove that it's related to itself um, and for that purpose you just make use of the identity function on A. The identity function is a bijection from A to itself, and therefore A is equivalent to itself. And that proves that the relation is reflexive. Now see if you can prove that it is symmetric. Well, to show that it's reflexive, or rather symmetric, you give yourself two elements of your underlying collection. You assume that A is related to B, and then you have to deduce that B is related to A. Well, to say that A is related to B is to say that there exists a bijection from A to B. According to the previous theorem, F inverse is then a bijection from B to A, and therefore B is related to A as well. And finally, see if you can write down the proof that the relation is transitive. very simple application of the third part of the previous theorem. We give ourselves three sets. We assume that A is related to B and B is related to C, and you have to deduce that A is related to, to C. Um, so this one implies that there exists a bijection F from A to B. This one that there exists a bijection from B to C, and we have to deduce that there exists a bijection from A to C and for that purpose, we just use the composition F composed with G. According to the previous theorem, that is a bijection from A to C. Well, that completes the proof that this is, in fact, an equivalence relation. So it follows that by the equivalence class theorem, the given collection of sets that you started with, no matter how big it is, it can be partitioned into um, distinct equivalence classes. So basically what's happening is you're taking all of the sets in your collection and you're identifying 
the ones that have the same cardinality.